only 165 sleeps before the Olympic Games kick off in London. I think, well, give or take a time zone. Some of Australia's biggest sporting names are in the middle of their campaigns to make the cut, some struggling with injury and some with form, or in the case of pole vaulter Steve Hooker, his own demons. It's often hard to get inside the tent to watch those struggles play out. But tonight, Olympics reporter Ben Knight meets one of the lesser known names, a young hopeful who only began training three years ago. Every champion has to start somewhere. But Munga Schwartz's journey has been tougher than most. He was just four years old when his father was killed in the Sudanese Civil War. Even as a child, he worked from dawn until dusk looking after his family's herd of cattle. Food was scarce, but danger was not. We got um, jets fired from northern Sudan um, firing us. You never know what happened because the other tribe might attack the other tribe. He only saw electricity for the first time when his family fled to Kenya. He saw his first athletics race watching the Athens Olympics in 2004. That's when I sat looking at TV and started looking at something big out there. Now, just seven years after arriving in Australia and after just three years of training, he wants to run in the Olympics himself. He's as fast as anything I've ever seen, yeah. Lindsay Bunn is his coach, mentor and, on race days like this, his chef. So does Mango always have steak for breakfast? It's only on race day because he... because, um... because <laughs> I don't want him eating sausages and he won't eat eggs. Mango's got 3% body fat, so he could, eat, he could eat anything he wanted. Lindsay Bunn's own athletics career was crushed, along with two of his vertebrae, when he was run over by a tractor in his 20s. He decided to get back into athletics as a coach, and three years ago started a small athletics program in a Perth park. This kid turned up in the park and he, he looks a bit like a giraffe on amphetamines. His raw speed is, is, is world class, but he lacks racing experience. Um, uh, it's just going to take a few years for us to get that experience into him and, and be able to show, you know, show that talent that he's got. And that begins tonight at the Perth Track Classic. It's one of the main lead-up events to next month's Olympic trials in Melbourne. Normally, Manga Shuat would have slept in his own home, but he's had to move in with his coach for his own safety. Just before Christmas, a group of Sudanese men broke into his house and bashed him. He just kept saying, you know, they've got my legs, they've got my legs, because it means so much to him. When you knew that your legs were hurt, what were you thinking? Can I ever run again? Yeah. His sister Ayor says the family knows who did it, but doesn't know why. I knew the guys for like half of my life, you know, like for them to be fighting us, I don't, it's just, I don't know what to say. Then last month there was another attack at a party in a Perth suburb. One of Manga Shuat's friends was stabbed and Ayor Shuat was punched in the face. Two men have since been charged, but no one has yet been charged over the first assault. Ayor Shuat doesn't even live in Perth anymore. She's at home visiting from her day job in New York. I'm bored and cheap and cheerful. Is this what it's like in New York? Or? <laughs> not, not really. It's glamorous in New York. And when I come back home, it's busy like cleaning, cooking, taking the kids to school. Tonight, Ayor is taking the kids to barrack for their brother, who they all hope will be the family's next success story. Why not? I made it to New York. He can, he can make it to London. But first comes Perth. Tonight's the first night since the attack he'll run without injections. But they're taking every other precaution they can. How's your foot feeling? Better. Better? Yeah. Good, good. Are we just taping it up today? What are we doing? Yeah, I'm taping it in light massage. He's a bit tight in his left hamstring. Then it's time to head to the track. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, Manga Schwartz will share the bill with names like Sally Pearson, John Stephenson and Tamsin Manu. His camp is expecting big things. If he can get his start right, he should run a time that takes him to a new level of sprinting. Starter held them a while. It's one of the best starts of his career. But then... Running well. Chuot's pulled up. It looks like a hamstring. He is laying on the track about 30 metres from the finish. What a shame. Oh, what a shame for the hometown favourite, Chuot. It is coming through the... His sister rushes to the track to find out what's wrong. But neither she nor the coach are being allowed near him until the drug testing's done. Doctors confirm a small tear to his hamstring. 
It's a common enough injury for sprinters, but it's also right on the spot where his leg was beaten in the attack. Is it because of the, the injury? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I never had it, I never had this before, so yeah. It's certainly not a career-ending injury, but it has knocked him out of the Olympic selection trials in three weeks' time. It would be devastating to any athlete, but you wouldn't know it to look at him. He doesn't whinge about anything, he looks at the positive side, yeah. You know, you know, that's his favourite saying again, um, it's all good. Already, they're aiming for the national championships in April. At 22, and with just three years of training under his belt, Mangar Shuat still has plenty of years ahead of him. Like any athlete, he'll have his battles with injury. But most athletes only have to worry about getting hurt on the track. Well, you'll bite. <laughs>